take home last week? What did we take home last week? Mm -hmm. Does it mean that last week we didn't have letters? Yes, Esther. Please, last week we spoke about uh, the definition of community, of which we said it's a group of people with a common characteristics, characteristic or interest living within a, a, a society. Then we also spoke about the sub systems in the community, which we said some are the physical environment, education, safety, health, and social service, communication, economy, and the others. We also spoke about um, levels of prevention, which we said hey, yes, that, yeah. yeah. Ah. Are you not missing unit one with unit two and three? Hey. <laughs> hey, hey. God, thank you so far. <laughs> hmm? Thank you. Don't oh, take you. us back. We shall front. <laughs> thank you. Any other? Any other? Where are the members? Where are the class people? Yes, Georgina, your hand is up. Where is my little book that I am writing names of people who contribute? Yes, Georgina, your hand is up. We also talk about, we talk about community health, which we said is a part of a health that deals with the individual families and then the community. And then its focus is to um, improve upon the well-being of the um, society using preventive measures. We also spoke about some of the comp components of the community health. We talked about nutrition, family planning, communicable diseases, medical, ethics and so on and so forth <laughs> we also spoke about the community entry and uh, you made uh, us understand that when you even cited an example that when you are being posted to uh, a place oh georgina you, you don't tell get, us what get up and then community go there. You entry have to... is not the example tell us what community entry is what is community oh. entry <laughs> okay so we said it is a why is said, uh, and the, Ghana for, by the moment you ask them something they will not explain they'll say for example uh i had the head minister Uh huh. What is community entry? All right, patients. I think we've lost Jenna. Sister, please last week. What is happening here? They can't unmute themselves. Hello, sister. Mm -hmm. Last week, we also talked about level of prevention. And you said we have three, but we have four, but you are dealing with the three levels. Patience. Sister. Auntie. Sister. We have gone past there. We are not there. We are not there. Levels of prevention, you trim. And we also talk about attitude required in community entry. You said you have to have patience, you have to be tolerant, respect for the other people, humility, and then good listening at attitude. And we talked about skills in community entry. You have to maintain an eye contact, show interest, 
be empathy, encourage others to listen, and then that's what I can say for now. Okay, thank you. Yes, honey, your hand is up. Honey child, honey child, honey child, Popia. <laughs> Nah, Sister, we talk about. Popian, we are doing. I can. I can be. I can be here now. Fanti, I can. I na Santi, I can. I na ko u. I Santi. I Santi ni de. Honey child, the old day here day. Hey boy, ne o kuya mansa ne ya abudi. Sister. <clears throat> We discuss about community entry, then you define community entry as the process of initiating, nurturing, and sustaining a desirable relationship with the purpose of securing and sustaining the community interest in all aspects of programs. Then we move on to talk about the skills required in community entry. So during community entry, the person should maintain eye contact, have to listen to both sides of the issues. Then you have to show interest about what they are discussing, be empathetic, and you paraphrase everything that they say. Then you encourage, you also encourage others to listen. Then the attitude required in community and entry. Talk about the humility, Person should be patient, respect, tolerance, and good listener. Thank you. Thank you. Yes, Adina, your hand is up. Okay, sister. Um, please. Uh, as part of the um attitude required in community entry, that one too. Um, you need to have respect for other people. Then you need to be. <clears throat> You need to be tolerant. You need to tolerate um, how um, the attitudes of the community members. Then you said before you enter a community, there, there is a need to identify the community by gathering information through formal and informal means. Then we also read from available literature. Then you need to talk to knowledgeable people, that's the elderly people, to identify yourself to them. Wow. You know what? Hello. Hello. Sister. 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 Edna, what better for us? Eh, Kasa, you will trick us in ya. Yes, yeah, you did. You have a wedge, I fret, fret. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, I wasn't here with you. That's why you're answering questions. There's no attitude. Oh, you don't know. The way you're answering the question. That's what we are in the hand watching and imprint. No, we are going to be sad. I'm sorry. I wasn't saying that, but that's why. Just a sorry. Please, you also talk about the importance of sister. I wasn't feeling well, though. Sorry. We also talk about the importance of community entry. Then you said it ensures the establishment of good working relations, relationship between you and the community members. And also, it helps one to plan his or her work. And it helps to observe protocols. Thank you.
Where are you going to get the sound from? Namope Kasa Kuradutu. Ah. In my network, Edna, Edna, Sesame Network, I got watching. I had to struggle for more than necessary to enter here as a new sound. We will be talking. So somebody is also on the platform called J. Yate. All right. So last week we started talking about community and we started with community, what community health is. We looked at the, before that we talked about community. Look at the subsystems in the community. Then we finished with community mobilization. I'm sorry, I think I will have to be doing the teaching here because not, 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 not. So we said that community entry 
is the process of initiating a relationship. You nurture that relationship. You sustain that relationship for the purpose. The purpose of community entry is to secure and sustain community's interest in all whatever we are coming to do in the community. And therefore, in simple terms, community involves the recognition of the community, the leadership and the people in the community, and then adopting the most appropriate process in meeting, interacting, and then working with the community leadership and the people. You have nurtured the community. You have sustained the community. What's next? What's next? We are looking at community diagnosis as health professionals. One of the things that we do in the community is to identify and quantify health problems in the community in terms of morbidity and then mortality rates and ratios. This is what we call community diagnosis. We go into the community, if we want to diagnose the community, it means that we want to identify the health problems, quantify, place a quantity, quantum, magnitude of it in terms of mortality. So if you take mortality, what is the quantity? what is going on in terms of quantity, in terms of numbers. And then when you take the morbidity also in terms of numbers, that is what community diagnosis is. And so when you want to diagnose the community, it means that this identification and quantification that you are doing in the community, you are examining the aggregate of it. In terms of uh, um, social statistics, then up with these statistics, you also, in addition, look at the situation, the local situation. Adline, stop painting my slides. I've been saying the since the first semester. I don't like it. Stop painting it. Stop screenshotting my stuff. So what you want we do with diagnosis is that, or what it means to diagnose the community is that we are examining the aggregate and then the social statistics of whatever we are looking at. And then in addition to the local situation, what is happening there? If you go and then, if you go and you cannot, you, you see something, before you can draw your conclusions, you should be looking at the local situation in there. And this will help you to determine the needs of the community. Some of the goals of community diagnosis is to analyze the health status of the community. That is the first goal. You want to analyze the health status in terms of mortality and then morbidity. You want to know the number of um, persons who are disease-free, the number of persons who are diseased, the number of persons who have died and all those things. You want to know all these things. That's why you want to know the health status. Then you want to evaluate the health resources. What kind of resources do we have in the community? the services in the community, and then the systems of care within that particular community. And then you also have to, uh, you, another goal is to assess the attitudes towards community health services and issues by the community members themselves. Then when you finish, when you finish all these things, you write something we call the community profile. So you will then analyze all the information that you have examined 
in terms of to define the needs of the community, the strengths of the community, the barriers, the opportunities, readiness, and then resources. And then you put all of them in something we call the community profile. What we call the community profile. All right. Then one will ask, what do we use to diagnose the community? What do we use to diagnose a community? You said that we are diagnosing the community. So you diagnose the community using something we call the health indicators. And these health indicators, before you can use them, there are certain characteristics that the indicator that you are going to use should have. And one of the characteristics is that the indicator should be valid. When we talk of valid, we are looking at it in terms of phase and then content validity. We did this in research. Then when we say that, we said it should be reliable and objective. Whatever instrument that you are going to use as an indicator should be able to measure and it should be able to, um, like let's say measure one thing. It should have one measurement. Then we say that it should be sensitive. When you talk of sensitivity, we are looking at the situation where it should be sensitive to change. Let's assume you went there to measure infant mortality. Then based on the local knowledge, you realize that the infant mortality is high. Based on the local knowledge, you got to realize that is as a result of uh, mother's inability to feed their children, you bring in an interventional study. And when you go back to measure infant mortality again, based on the interventions that you have given, there should be a change. It should be able to change. That is what sensitivity is. Then it should be specific. As you are doing the changes, you tampered with the infant feeding and all those things. And therefore, the change should be specific to infant mortality change then feasible it should be such that when you need data when you need information regarding the indicator you should be able to get it and it should be relevant you don't go and use an indicator that is not relevant it should be relevant. Be so valid, reliable, and then objective, sensitive, specific, feasible, and then relevant. These are some of the characteristics of the health indicator that you will use. So let's look at the classification of these health indicators. We have mortality indicators example like the infant mortality rate the crude death rate maternal mortality ratio case fatality rates and the rest i'm not calling you then we have mortality we have mortality rates please mute yourself i don't have the access to mute anyone and so if you don't mute yourself and you talk, I will walk out of the class. Isa Sherifatu, mute yourself. Rest, tell them. 
I don't have that right. And so if anybody talks and the class becomes noisy, I'll leave the class. Then we have the morbidity indicators. Example is the prevalence rate and then the incidence rate. Then you have the disability rates, the number of days you have excused duty, the number of days you stay on the bed. Then you have the nutritional status indicators. You have the healthcare delivery indicators. You have the utilization indicators where we can think of the ANC, the, the, the proportion of pregnant women who uses ANC and the proportion of pregnant women who use um, ANC and skilled delivery. Then we have the indicators of social and mental health. We can measure homicide, suicide. Then we have the environmental indicators. An example is measuring the vector density. Because we are endemic to malaria, we talk of the vector density as well. Then we have the socioeconomic indicators, where we also look at the illiteracy rate of mothers, illiteracy rate of females, illiteracy rate of females. Then we have the health policy indicators, and this is the economic aspect of it. We look at the national gross product that has been given to the allocated to the health sector. Then we have indicators of quality life and then other indicators. Then we have other indicators. We have done our community entry. We have diagnosed the community and we have come out with common diseases in the community. We've come out with staff in the community and it is time for us to mobilize the community it is time for us to do action in the community and thus we will look at it from the definition of community mobilization the principles of community mobilization community mobilization strategies community mobilization action community engagement and then team building and group dynamics now, what is community mobilization? Community mobilization is, or community mobilization involves assisting the people to become more aware. The emphasis here is more aware. The people are aware of their community, but you are assisting them to become more aware of their community. That is the first thing. Identifying the real needs of the community. You realize that even as individuals, you have real needs and you have fake needs. The economists will say that you have needs and you have wants. There are certain things you don't need them, you want them. And so if you don't oh, get really them, it's okay. Then we have the, you, you assess them in becoming aware of their community, identifying the real needs of the community, believing that something can be done and must be done to meet the needs of the community and the willingness to use the resources available in the community to meet the needs of the community. This is what we call community mobilization.
One, you assist the people to become more aware of their community. Two, you assist them in identifying the real needs of the community. Three, you assist them in believing that something can be done and must be done to meet the needs of the community. Four, assist them so that they'll have the willingness to use the resources available in the community to meet the needs of the community. And the principles of community mobilization thrives on dialoguing, capacity building, social responsibility, transparency and accountability, sustainability, gender, and then the ethic of doing no harm. You are a midwife in a community. You have been sent to a community, the Crescom community. You have been assigned to the Crescom community. And you have realized that pregnant women do not, pregnant women do not attend antenatal care services in the community. Rather, these people, these pregnant women travel 10 kilometers to another community to attend ANC. Comforting tea. Mute yourself. Mute yourself. And this question that I'm asking, if you don't answer me, so I'm moving. Who told you that if you unmute yourself, you mute yourself, you will not let, um, um, get to understand whatever is going on? Now, you as the midwife, using dialogue as a principle of community mobilization, how are you going to get these women, pregnant women, to patronize the ANC in the Crescom community? instead of the Ereta community that is 10 kilometers away. Let's get interactive. How are you going to do that as a midwife using dialogue? First of all, let's know what dialogue is. What is dialogue? What do you understand by the word dialogue? What is dialogue? Mm -hmm. Yes, Anita. Hello, sister. Sister, please. Dialogue is more of an interaction or communication between uh, two, two or more factions or groups of people. Okay, so having this as the definition, operational definition of dialogue on the platform. How are you going to use dialogue to let the women, pregnant women, retrieve their steps from going to the Ereta community, which is 10 kilometers far from the Crescom community? How are you going to use dialogue to do this? Mm -hmm. please. I think that uh, as a midwife, I should be able to engage these pregnant women in Sister conversation. Anita, we know that dialogue is engaging. How are you going to do that? These people are not attending the ANC. They are they are they are prepared to go to this length, 10 kilometers. So using the principle of dialogue. Using the principle of dialogue. Yes, Imoro Elizabeth, your hand is up. Alberta, your hand is up, and Matilda, your hand is up. Let's do that in that order. Okay, ma. So to me, 
in my situation, like I will try and then do home visits. Or maybe if they are already prepared and they are on the way, I'll just try to catch them at one corner. Maybe we'll, I'll just tell them to wait for a minute. Let me have a conversation with them. Then I'll try to find out what their problems are, why they don't attend um, uh, ANC in that community, but rather go to different a different community to attend ANC. I'll better. And that we get interactive and then we now get to know the problems involved in it. Thank you. Alberta? Sister, I also use community deba. I, I will channel my information through the opinion leaders, seek more information through uh, my opinion leaders and chiefs. Then I will also conduct a community deba to find out the problems of the community women, why they are not coming to ANC in Chriscom community, and how I'll be able to solve that problem for them. Remember, you are Thank using you. dialogue. Dialogue. Don't deviate the question. It's dialogue. Matilda. Hello, sister. Please, I'll use the TBA in the community to get the pregnant women and also interact with them through the TBA to know. They are not going to the TBA. They are going to a different community altogether. It also means that they don't recognize the service of the TBA in the community. You are using dialogue. Yes, Victoria, your hand is up. On oh, yeah, ready. Yes, Mary, your hand is up. So we have Mary, we have Emilia, and then we have Araba. Hello, ma'am. Okay. Sister, I will Hello. use mother to mother. Hello. I didn't get it. Please, Mary, please. I can't hear you. Don't talk. Emilia. Victoria, please mute yourself. When we gave you the opportunity, you didn't talk. Mute yourself. I will try and create a rapport with one client who is ready to embark on that 10 kilometers journey to great community and interact with her. Ask her why she's going to that facility for ALC uh, services and not the Eric Queen community. With that, I will further ask what she gets over there, the kind of treatment she gets over there that the uh, Eric community is not providing. And through that, I'll gather some information and also know my how best I can help them to come back to their community. All right. Yes, Araba, your hand is up. Okay, sister. So after you have found out from them the reasons why they have they have chosen to go somewhere else to ad, uh, assess ANC services. I think that we have to actively listen to what they have to say about Araba. them. Yes, Araba, where are you going to find out where they have gone? You see, After, the reason someone... why, let me tell you something. The reason okay, why sure. you students, when you go to exam room, you think you have written, you leave the exam room and you realize that you have deviated. The research <laughs> that I'm marking. We stood here, we sat here, did tutorials, and even said that your main and specific objective should be aligning with your topic. People went in there, somebody is writing, the topic is knowledge. All of a sudden, the person gets to main and specific objective, and the person is talking about factors. 84 marks, the amount for to touch on it, sir. And it is sad to tell you that. People are getting as low as three, any two over 30. 
something we've done in class and we've talked about it. We've done in class, we've worked about it, we've talked about it. Yeah, can, 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 can. You go to exam's room and you, you take a decision. But uh, I was here and I said that the moment you tell yourself that you're going to use a missed method, tell us the particular missed method. And yeah, you continue qualitative or one case away to me, exam's room, telling yourself that you want to fail. It's all the difficult things is what people did. It's not you, Araba. It's, it's a general thing. So the thing I'm saying is this. You, you have realized that they don't attend ANC in the community. They rather attend the ANC clinic 10 kilometers. Use dialogue. Somebody explain dialogue to us. It's a communication between two people. Dialogue, when you are dialoguing with somebody, there is no fight. There is no raising of voice. There is cordiality. So choose dialogue to solve this problem. You've taken the lead. Hey, Sandra. Sandra Jewa. Me, I, I left. So I don't have the host right again. My send a message in answer. It will be the day I'm sorry. I can't stress myself. <laughs> mm -hmm. So dialogue. Yes, Emilia, your hand is up again. Anastasia and then Alberta. Let's see how it goes. Then I will read the chats also. Try and read some of the chats. So I'm a mune to be And now by your cross or them. She has still unmuted herself. She's talking and because we can hear. Yes, Anastasia, your hand is up. Okay, sister. I will go to the community they prefer to uh, uh, have the AMC to meet the midwife there and have a dialogue with the midwife and know why uh, the pregnant woman prefer. Are you people afraid okay. of the, the pregnant woman? What do you want from the, the, the midwives? What are yes, you looking for that. in the so midwife? I want to know, maybe she's having a special way of treating them. Then I, after I found out, I'll come back to the community, the Christian community, have home visit, then meet all the pregnant women uh, one by one at their homes. Mm -hmm. Then find out why they would prefer going there and not the friendly. And you the think the midwife community. who is getting people to boost her um, numbers will tell you that will be your starting point. Good for thought. Alberta. Sister, please. Um, I will also use health education. I will organize health education, educate the mothers on the importance of ANC and why they should patronage their um, uh, community clinic and then. Um, uh, importance of them patronizing their Where are you going uh, to engage them? Sister, Where are you through going health to education, I'll organize health education within the people churches. that are not in the community. They are going 10 kilometers somewhere. You think that these people, you call them and do health education, they will come. Sister, I'll go to their churches. Hmm. Dialogue. Patience, your hand is up. We read others. Okay. okay, sister, as for me, you I will check when many of them go for the antenatal ladder, please. And meet them maybe on the roadside and talk to them about or ask them reason why they are not patronizing their own ANC and tell them the necessary important things that if they come this and that maybe a new midwife has come so that 
as they, they see two or three that the old midwife is gone. <laughs> okay, sister, like if you are if I meet them and talk to them, if they see two or three people patronizing their own, they will start following the those that they've started coming to their ANC. At their at their scratch come with community. Let's read that. <laughs> Let's look at the somebody says, let's see. We'll communicate with the pregnant women that attend clinic at the Crescom community to find out why others are not coming. I will do home visit and involve their partner. Erica, did they tell you that their partner is the issue? I will go for home visits, educate the pregnant women on ANC and also perform ANC services to them during the home visit. Deborah, I will do home visit to find out the problem. I identify key holders, stakeholders, through home visit, I'll get to meet them personally, ask why they prefer the other facility and not the one in the community based on having asked you to strategize. Based on the responses, I'll strategize to make them feel free and comfortable to come to the facility. You should obviously the <laughs> Identify all pregnant, conduct home visits. Why are you going to identify all of them? Mother to child support, mother to mother support. Christiana, where are you going to get that mother to child mother support? By visiting them in their various homes to find out the reason. Face to face conversation with women. Every woman you meet, you do face-to-face -face conversation. Say I know more to marks training exams. To encourage in their community, I will initiate or not so 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 we say so exam so marking a paper over bread. Yeah, be sa question no as a question. To encourage pregnant women to attend yes, when you know it is primary school way of answering question. Question has been asked. The person that asked the question know the question. You know the question. Must you start with story? Community dialogue. Mm? Must you start with long story? There are people that are going to meet people. Okay, promise. Malaika. Tarut <laughs> Kayano. Whose yes, center does she belong to? What center does she belong to? Who is her rep? That you can't call her to order. What is wrong with her? Keep going. When I'm done, they will send you an email. An email. All right. See you at Fort Tamale. But... Tamari rep, call your Rukaya to order because she cannot hold the whole class to ransom. Call her to order. If she doesn't want to attend the lecture, she should leave the platform and go attend to her child and her husband. Yes, Linda, your hand is up. Sister, please, I will go for home visits and ask the pregnant women their reason. It might be that in their community, the ANC days are not suitable for them. Maybe it's the day they used to go to farm or the day they use for their personal staffs. So if the Why ANC day is not suitable... Not to cut you short. Why do everybody think that they are going there to ask for reasons. 
you want to use dialogue and you are going there to do questions and answers, food for thought. Another uh, is uh, food for thought. Mm? You are using dialogue. It is dialogue you are going to use. And you feel that you are going to ask, what is dialogue? Let's go back to the basis. What is dialogue? So our question, where your potential question. Hmm. What is dialogue? What is dialogue? The funny thing is that when you ask a question, then somebody, the question that you have finished answering, that is where somebody is typing. Conversation between two or more people as, or taking part in the conversation. Yes, Christiana, your hand is up. Christiana, your hand is up. And so why are you going for home visit to 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 give health education? Why are you going for home visit to give health education? Mm -hmm. Why are you going for home visits to give health education? Let's hang it. We will come back. Hang it. We will come back. Yes, Vida, your hand is up. They normally listen to the opinion leaders in the community. So I will liaise with the opinion leaders and then tell them of what is happening within the community so that together with the opinion leaders, they can help me to talk to the pregnant women. You think you know, opinion leaders are, are not aware? That's what you think? I think they do listen to them more. So even if they are aware of it, they're talking to them on my behalf will do something for so me. So you, you can't do anything on your own. You cannot initiate anything unless so assuming the stakeholders are part of the people encouraging them to go there. It means that you can't do anything on your own. Mm -hmm. Sarah, your hand is up. Hello, sister. I will start rendering the ANC services in their various homes. What is happening to that dialogue? Mm -hmm. that dialogue, there are a lot of you have thrown dialogue um, out, and you are finding start, other solutions. Uh, educating. Mm -hmm. Esther, your hand is up. Esther, your hand is up. Esther, I can't hear you. You let's move. We will still come back. Please still be thinking about dialogue. The principle of I'll dialogue. Talk to me and, and sell my service. All right, let's move. But Hold that thought. We will still come back to it.
Uh, we are coming here. Let me finish it. I've just collected it. Ziki, it's a word. It's a labor word. I could be a poor one. Aha, what about you? Yeah, he's just a half. Yeah. Please, it's too small. I'm starting. Let me do it. Yeah, yeah. I'm in a hurry. So Steps for effective community mobilization. You first of all have to identify and assess the community using community entry process. Then you have to select and train your community spokesperson and then mobilizers. You need to have a community spokesperson and then mobilizers. These cannot can be stakeholders or they can also not be stakeholders. Then you need to establish a formal structure for effective information flow. You don't just get up and talk, but you know that, or if you need to reach out to you, the health officer, there are channels of communication. You cannot just get up and then chat. Then you identify and implement community mobilization activities. What activities do you want? You do that. So these are the principles, the key steps. Then action, you realize that it's like, it's a continuous process. If you look at the arrows, every arrow is pointing to something. You prepare to do your mobilization. Then you organize the community for action. You explore the health issues and then set your priorities. You plan with the community 
you act together, you evaluate together, you prepare to scale up. So as you prepare to scale up, you prepare to mobilize. So the cycle goes on. Now, we have principles and we have strategies. So the people, those that were now saying that the stakeholders, they listen to them, it means that it's a strategy that you are going to use. The principle of dialogue, you want to use the strategy of strong leadership. So if the principle, you are using your principle of dialogue based on the strong leadership. And so you people have secured that leadership by identifying or agreeing with the fact that the people listen to the stakeholders more. Therefore, you are using them as your strong leadership strategy. But one strategy is that secure a strong leadership. Then establish a formal structure. Yes, the opinion leaders are there. The Odikro is there. The Ochiame is there. The religious leader is there. How do you establish a formal structure for them? For them to know that um, the health officer is the last person that maybe you can come to. If you are having challenges, talk to this person, speak to this person, like in the university system. Actually, the president is the last person. If you have issues in your center relating to groupings and all those things, you first of all have to tell your reps that you don't have a group. Then the rep will tell the lecturer. Some people go as far as a coordinator, a center coordinator calling to ask me about groupings, me in the classroom teaching, administrator outside. Tell your reps, then the reps will send in your names. Some people, they don't wait. They don't have that waiting spirit. So the moment the reps send the names and their names are not there, or they haven't heard anything, they come to your DM and I sent my name to my rep and I, the rep hasn't done anything. Then you sit down and you ask yourself this question and you answer. Since you sent your name to the rep, have there been any updated list? If the answer is no, it means that you cannot accuse your rep. Formal structure. Engage diverse organizations. You enter or you go into a community and you realize that we have market women, we have male, 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 male uh, mechanics, we have so so and so group of persons. And somebody wrote that woman to woman support group. So all these groups are there. So another strategy, somebody brought it, that I'll use the woman, a uh, woman to woman, woman to woman support group. It's a strategy. You are engaging diverse organizations. That was I said, hold your thoughts. You have jumped, you have moved away from the principle of dialogue and you were looking at strategies. Then you ensure authentic participation and shared decision making. Community mobilization is such that, that's why I was asking that using dialogue and that dialogue that people are going to use is where they are now going to ask and find, um, ask them about their problems. People are going to do health education. People are even going to do ANC. A is a dialogue. If you see me moody, and then you want to find out why I am moody, and you know that you cannot get it out of me by asking me, um, Krista, sister, why are you moody? I won't I would say that oh, I'm not moody. But you're saying, oh, it's normal. You have to engage me in a conversation. Try to establish rapport. And one thing I've realized about GCUC students is that they, when they want to chat you, they will come and greet you. Good morning, sister. How are you? Me, eh? I was telling my project students and they were laughing. If you come and greet me, good morning, how are you? Sometimes I read and I go my way. Because the good morning and the how are you 
that you want to use it to establish rapport. No? That's why they, they, it is all staff. Good morning. How are you saying? Eh? Hello, sister. Then whatever you want to talk about, talk about it. Personally, I'm not too fussy about greetings. I'm not too fussy about greetings and the how are you. I told somebody that the how are you that you are asking me, that currently I don't have money. If I tell you I don't have money, will you give me some? So don't come and ask me how are you? Because if I tell you the real situation, can you solve it? Let's chat. How are you? Some people, they will come and say good morning. Then they will go waiting for you to come and respond good morning before you talk. If you want to talk, talk. But don't be greeting the how are you? I'm just checking on you. The moment you reply, thanks for checking on me. Pe the person has issued, the person is coming to discuss. But please do your discussion. Do your discussion. So get authentic participation and shared decision making. Sometimes we do things, we don't share decision making with people, we impose. On them, the year level 400 midwives and nurses. I was supposed to teach them curriculum for the past two weeks. And the timetable, there has been distortions in the timetable. So I couldn't get the chance to teach them for two weeks, one week. So the week two, I went to their platform and I asked them that they can give me, because Sundays they don't have lecture. I was asking for two hours of their Sunday so I could do a makeup lecture for them for the uh, almost two weeks that they have missed it. And come and see, somebody was so rude, rude, as in rude, and it will inconvenience me. And so they said that, oh, if it will inconvenience you, and you, the, the, those that will get, uh, be inconvenienced are few, let us do the lecture to do, let us do the lecture. The person came to write. And you do the lecture and let us see. One rep came to me and said that, sister, you shouldn't have asked us for our opinion. You should have brought a time that we are having lecture. I said, I don't do that. I don't impose myself on people. I don't force myself on people. And you are adults. So why will I come and impose myself on you people? I will not come and impose myself on you. I solicited for two hours, but let's get this straight. You couldn't give me your two hours because you think it will inconvenience you. In the course of the semester, nobody, no rep should call me or ask for my two hours or my four hours to come and teach you because you want tutorial or something. Then somebody came to write, this is a threat. And I was laughing. Is this a threat? And another person came to ask them, can you eat your cake and have it? The lecturer comes to you to ask for two hours to teach you, you. I'm not coming to take the two hours to do my own thing. I'm coming to teach you something you've lost. You say no. But I, Krista, should come and use my Sunday that I also go and preach, or sometimes I, I lie on my bed after church to, to, to relax. I, dear, I, because me, they are not a human being, I should give you my hours. I said, you got to be joking. On your timetable, do you have tutorials there? Do you have extra teaching there? I go the extra mile to do that. And if you, you have a free period, it, because the Tutorial that you come and ask me for will be the same Sunday that it will inconvenience you. So why will I bother myself? I said that you've shot yourself in your leg. You can't ask me for any favor when it comes to extra teaching or when it comes to tutorials because it will be the same Sunday that you'll be using and you have declared that Sundays are inconveniencing. It will inconvenience you. I said, the rap is like, chai. I said, you people, you don't reason. Koda, you say sometimes somebody is sitting or lying on the bed and the person thinks that he, she, or she can say something. They said it and me have been quiet. Since then, they've missed two, 
two um, lectures. Everybody is far gone. Tomorrow we are starting the lecture, but we can we can only start with three. We can't start with one and two. There should be. Well, I mean, I know that I'm going to be able to come Oh, Please, just fina do mic. Hey, oh boy. Catch and say, you put a warm way, we say. Hey, Raddy, me be. When you're ready, I know, Paddy, I will. Hey, hey. Hmm. Hmm. Is it difficult to mute yourself? Is it so difficult to do that? That mute yourself thing, no? Is it so difficult to do that? Is it difficult? No, sister, it's not difficult. Is it difficult to be no, a No, please. Is it, is it difficult? Because I keep no, asking no. myself that is it difficult to just mute your mic and let your phone or whatever device that you are using be there without you tampering it. Do you know the funny thing? People that don't answer anything in class are the people that unmute themselves. I apologize for not um, having control over their phone. You see, me, I'm a behavior scientist. Apology for what? Me, do I even care about your apology? If you want to apologize, do the right thing. You have come to class, you are in a class. Now ask yourself that if you are in a typical classroom, sitting in the classroom, are you kidding me? Are you simply kidding me? Even myself, as I'm sitting in my house, if my son appears here and he wants to speak with me, I first of all mute my mic and make sure that the mic is muted. Then I can talk. So anytime you are in the class and you want to talk, you feel like talking, which nobody is preventing you from not talking. Make sure that you have muted yourself. It's a sign of respect. All of you that unmute yourself and you disturb us, you don't respect us one bit. You think you are the only person that has paid fees. Keep your sorry to yourself. You have unmuted yourself for more than five minutes. You are coming here to write sorry. Sorry for what? What will our sorry do? Respect yourself and respect us and let us do this lecture and go away in peace. When you sign on, the moment you sign on, 5.15, you have signed for two hours. Make sure you mute yourself for that two hours or throw your phone away or whatever device and go and sleep in your house. Ah, yeah, can I buy that off for soon? So I can unmute in itself. Not see any other day. Me, I don't have this encounter because I always have the right to unmute, mute and unmute everybody. It is today that I'm having the challenges and I'm not finding it funny. If you are not ready for a lecture, don't attend. Now more three over thirty, you know. Any more trails, you know. Now my jamar dear. And these are the people that get the worst marks in the class, because one, they are not paying attention. Two, they don't care. 
So any vital information you tell them, they don't even hear. Why should you be learning and conversing at the same time? Because it's online. Because it is online, you want to learn and converse at the same time. I share to social science. I share to no or no social science. <laughs> yeah, we won't do any lecture. We are going home like that. Refs. Please. Oh, this is why are you behaving this way? Eh? Are we kids? True. Me, they have time. When you talk, I stop teaching. When you finish talking, I teach. When one person starts talking, I will stop teaching. But I will not go back to teach today's lesson. Have it there. Because we cannot be talking and talking and talking. Hey, you are in school. No my fault. Then ensure authentic and productive roles for the young people. Many a times we think that the youth have nothing to offer. As in trying to mobilize people, we take them out of it. We don't engage them. But one strategy that will work for you, because the youth are energetic. They are energetic and they can work. So involve them. Involve them as part of your strategy. Then develop a shared vision. Don't go with your vision, but go there and say, this is my vision. I've done assessment. This is what you also need. Let's come together and then have a shared vision so that this can work. Then create a strategic plan after you all have done or conducted and needs assessment. So we are mobilizing the people to work and it brings us to community engagement. Community engagement. Community engagement. Community engagement. I will not talk about community engagement. I will pause because I have some announcements for you. When I finish the announcement and we still have time, we will talk about community engagement. If not, we will defer community engagement and talk about it after our group presentation. I know I have not brought the groupings. I've told your reps, I told them to send me the names of people with no group. That was two weeks ago. Some of the reps haven't sent it. Almost all of the reps sent them late, later. A rep that is supposed to send a group the first week, brought it last, that there is a Monday or something, two weeks to correct him, But there will be a first cohort of groups that will do a community entry, diagnose a community, and use a one community strategy and one community principle that will be there. The prayer, the, the, the community issues will be given to you. And then you use all these things and you come and do your presentation. So Jennifer Graham that has unmuted herself. You know? I don't know what she's coming to tell us. That, so how many groupings did we have? 
Refs. How many groups? If you count them, how many were they? How many groups were they? Please, how many? Uh, what is the group? Mm -hmm. So the number of groups will be shared into three. A cohort will do manage communicable disease when we get to epidemiology. Then a cohort of groups will plan health promotion activity when we get to health promotion. The first cohort of group will be diagnosing a, diagnosing and mobilizing a community. By Sunday or by Monday, you will get the full groupings. Then you also get to know which areas each group will be looking at. Like the research, you will get the same thing, but it means that do your own work. So if the groups are five, all the five will bring different work, whatever they have done. And you will bring it by 2 p.m. on the 16th of February. You send it to my mail by latest by 2 p.m. Latest by 2 p.m. on the 16th. And as usual, you get yourself. I know some groups didn't present during research with all stories that has affected your grades. So make sure that you still learn how to raise your hand to signify that you are present. My network took me off, will not be counted. I was here from the beginning by the network took me off, will not be listening to. The raising of the hands, the presentation have its own mark, and then the submission of the content also have its own mark. They wrote, they omitted my name, means that you have scored zero. Normally, when they, they you come and you tell me that I omitted a name or they omitted my name, it tells me that you didn't take part of the work. I stand to be corrected, though. Because I believe that the first thing you people should be doing is that when you break into your groups to do whatever you want to do, the first thing that the leader or whoever is the recorder for the group is to take people's names and their index numbers. You don't take names and index numbers at the tail end of the work that you do. You have to get your group members their names and their index numbers. And so whenever you send a work to me and you come to tell me that there were omissions, it tells me that those people never participated in the group. That is my own little way of also saying people did not partake in the group. So this semester, that thing, no? That you, the group leaders, no matter when they do it, I'm looking at them. Those that send the work, I'm, you are students. You can bow for anybody. Please make sure that right from the word go, your name is there. I don't know how you do your thing, but every member should know that this is what we are sending and this is the list attached. So second semester here, we are not taking the excuse. That sister, it is my fault. If it is your fault, then I will remove your name and put the person's name there so that the person can get the mark. I don't want any carelessness here this semester. Those of you, when we give you templates that you don't use, there will be no second chances this semester. You can see my face because one, I am also in the same predicament. 
somebody was showing her video herself. So when I was the co-host, I just um, restricted access. And now I'm also like you. And so I can't show my video. I've, I've tried many times. Because I am no longer the co-host, I can't show my video. So I can't show anything. That's why I've been talking, mute yourself. I've been saying, mute yourself, mute yourself, because I don't have the right to do that at the moment. So please take these groupings very serious. It has cost a lot of people research. They, they are not here. Their names... Can I use your this thing? for about six hours continuous. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Then I'll change it and put this on. Like this is two hours, two hours, so what do I do? If to mute yourself. If you hey, want to mute yourself. Crystal <laughs> is no is no more there. We have to close. <laughs> Seriously, this best. Why? Madam, mute yourself, please. Adam, come on, mute yourself. Boy. I'm 
Hey, what Sisters, yeah, I'm not for one. 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 I'm not Bye, I'm going to go.